Parkland School District, fostering resiliency, shaping the future, transforming education. Picture the possibilities. Uh, I think resiliency means that I have to keep open to all the new innovations. I'm Angela Bockert. I teach information technology at Orfield Middle School. I'm teaching for 32 years. I started teaching um, on manual typewriters and have advanced to all kinds of technology. And every time a new technology comes out, I fear it at first, thinking I'm never going to try it. And then I try it and I love it. The collaboration has been amazing to watch the kids work together, to let them decide how to produce a final product. Since not every student learns the same way, technology allows for you to address many of the multiple learning styles that students have. I'm Sean Fluso, I'm a physics teacher at Parkland High School. I was reluctant about using some of this technology because it just seemed like a whole lot of work to do something which I was able to, in the past, do relatively successfully without the technologies. I saw the benefits to it. I saw students really become engaged and there was a case where I was out of class for over a week and I came back and students learned nearly as much as if I was there. Um, I turned to the program that we call Moodle, the online portal which allows you to um, give assignments to give quizzes, to have them do virtual activities. There sort of seems to be limitless possibilities with that there. I think I've only scratched the surface for what I can really do with it. Um, each year that I use it, I'm coming up with new ways and new uses for it. Shaping the future is kind of a combination of us shaping the students and the students shaping us. Taking what we think or thought school was and transforming it to meet the needs of our 21st century learners. I think in order to do that, you need to get onto a level with them where they can um, engage in the class and enjoy the class. My name is Damian Goodman. I'm a fifth grade teacher at Jandal Elementary School. A paperless classroom is where the students come in. They don't need pencils, notebooks, uh, paper, or textbooks themselves to learn within my classroom or any classroom in the district. <laughs> What inspired me to go paperless was uh, my infamous black bag. When I saw this stuff to the gills one day, I thought, you know what, I need to find a way to eliminate all this paper that I'm taking home. And that's where the idea of the paperless classroom was born for me. Initially, I started off using my website. We do have netbooks that we use. I was fortunate enough to be provided with Kindles. I'm Laura Kowalski, and I teach biology at Parkland High School. Well, science is very hands-on, and as you know, you learn by doing. What technology should be doing is enhancing the lessons where we have content that the kids can't touch and can't interact with. And that's where I came up with the idea of immersing some of these gaming ideas I came up with with a virtual environment. <laughs> One of them is Leechy Man. Um, I came up with the name because leeches are blood suckers and any villain needs a really good name, so <laughs> Leechy Man was it. And he is destroying the human race and it's up to the student who's you know, a secret agent who has to figure out you know, the mutation that Leechy Man is causing to the DNA, fix the mutation and actually rebuild the protein and they're surprised at what they know because I ask them, what did you learn? They're like, well, they can name some things. But after the assessment, like, oh, I didn't know I knew that. So that to me is pretty cool. My name is Jim Haynes. I'm a sixth grade teacher at Springhouse Middle School and I teach math, science, and social studies. Four teachers at Springhouse Middle School partnered with four teachers at Jano Elementary School in a pen pal process that was completely paperless. In the past, we had sixth grade teachers had sent um, piles and piles of papers um, to the elementary school. This year, there was no piles and piles of papers. Everything was on the computer. The students would type their rough copy submit it to us electronically. We would go in, open up the Word document, add our changes, no more red pen, no more paper. They we would add the comments in throughout the letter and uh, they would see what they needed to change. It has made me more motivated um, to continue to want to learn more. What else can I do? Most students enjoy technology. Um, they come ready with technology in their pockets. So I like to take that technology in any way I can and bring it into the classroom. 
I'm Melissa Goldstein. I teach 10th grade geometry at Parkland High School. One way I use cell phones in, in class is that I use text marks that allows the students to get text messages from me in mass for general reminders and daily announcements. They don't know my number, I don't know their number, they can't get their friends numbers that way, so it's very safe. Another tool that I use is GeoGebra. Um, it's a free interactive software um, that anybody can use, Mac or PC, and it's at geogebra.org. At the same time I'm demonstrating at the board, they can actually be doing it on the computer. I also do podcasts in my classroom, and it really helps the lower level students because they can take the time and get everything they need to before they come to class. Transforming education means using technology to extend the walls of the classroom. We're trying to make school match up with the daily lives of our students. Making our students leaders of the classroom using technology on a daily basis. My name is Christy Keating and I also teach math at Parkland High School. I teach algebra and geometry. I'm Terry Plattner. I'm a math teacher at Parkland High School and I teach Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. We're going to have flipped classroom this year for the first time and we're really excited about it. We don't know what's going to come. We don't know what the challenges are going to be. We don't know, you know what the interactivity is going to be yet. So I, it's going to be you know, a learning curve, but we're going to figure it out as we go. We'd use Khan Academy videos, um, screencasting, podcasting, uh, Study Island, using the data to drive our instruction and we are using that data, analyzing that data to find the students' strengths and weaknesses. We love technology, <laughs> so yeah. it's easy. And we love the kids and we love the education right. part of it, so there's nothing better than combining both of those in that same classroom. It's a lot about assessing the needs of your students, looking at their strengths, looking at their weaknesses. I'm Joan Krem, I teach fourth grade at Kernsville Elementary. I'm Allison Davis, I teach first grade at Kernsville Elementary. One of the things that we did last year especially was we took um, a web-based program from Parkland called Compass Learning and we created Compass Learning activities that went along with our math benchmarks. They're just fun little activities that the kids can do, but they go along with the math skills. And the neat thing is that each child had their own learning path. So one child may be working on something in a geometry area while another may be more algebraic. Um, and these learning paths are all geared towards exactly what the child needs. At Kernsville, our scores really improved in the math area, and um, I think that is a, a, a lot has to do with how well our teachers responded to this. Hi, I'm Kristen Yutt. I'm a math teacher at Springhouse Middle School. After each math lesson, uh, we developed videos uh, about those math lessons. Hello students, this is Miss Yutt here with a lesson, a synopsis of what we did in math class today. Not every student learns in rows and columns the first time a concept's introduced, especially in math. So now these video lessons that are easily accessible off of our Parkland website uh, just show the students exactly here's what we did in class. And the students have the luxury of watching it whenever they want, wherever they want, and for how many times they want to see it. I hope these videos are a way to you know, show my students I care, I want you to understand these concepts, you know, keep plugging away. I recommend that every teacher in every concept area give this a try. Grasp that technology, don't be afraid of it. Just give it a shot on a small scale first. You have to listen to the kids and what they're telling you and what they can show you and you have to have an open mind. The possibilities are truly endless. Parkland is a school district of unlimited possibilities. Unlimited possibilities. Unlimited possibilities. What amazing things. What amazing things. What amazing things will you do this year? Mm -hmm.